What's up, guys, and welcome to Scourge of War Waterloo, episode 34. Can you guys feel it? The end is near. It's drawing closer. All right, so today we are going to be taking a look at the French scenario for Vavra. It is called Pursue the Enemy. It is, again, two hours long, uh, just like the last uh, the Prussian version, uh, which was called uh, Bridge Over the River Dial. And uh, we command the Aledroit de l'Armée du Nord, which, though I probably pronounced it terribly, means the um, the right wing, I believe, of the Army of the North. Uh, and this it's 4 p.m. on June 18th, 1815. So, uh, again, the Battle of Waterloo is currently going on. Uh, on the same day. Uh, the situation is you have just received a dispatch from Mont Saint Jean confirming your orders from the Emperor to pursue the Prussians to Wavre. And the mission is attack the Prussians with sufficient sufficient vigor to prevent them from joining with Wellington. All right, so let's go down here and take a look at the uh, the map here, and we will do our little strategy session here. Now, the map isn't great here because most of Wavre is cut off, but it's good enough to basically explain what our strategy is going to be. And basically what it comes down to is uh, the objectives in this scenario are not worth a lot. This is one of the harder scenarios in the game. And the reason it's hard is if you've looked at my past videos where we are on the attack, what I generally like to do is assault the objectives and capture them as quickly as possible and then switch over to the defensive. Bring up my guns, set up a defensive position, put skirmishers out in front, and hold the objectives while the uh, while the the enemy tries to counterattack. So we get points from the objective, and at the same time, we bring our guns up and inflict casualties on the enemy as they try to counterattack. You can't really do that in this scenario, and the main reason is that the objectives just aren't worth enough. Um, they're worth the same as they were in the last scenario, Bridge Over the River Dial. Um, and that's basically each one, and there are four. There is one at Wavre, there's one at the Birges, there's one at Lamale, and there's one at Limolet. And basically, each one is worth 100 points every five minutes. So that really boils down to like 20 points a minute, which is not a lot uh, at all. So if you have all four of these, it adds up to you know 400 points every five minutes. Not a lot. Um, and we're not going to capture all four of them to begin with. So <clears throat> really what we have to do is hit the Prussians and hit them hard. Um, uh, but that's easier said than done. The, the Dial and, and the Town of Avar are actually very good defensive positions. Um, and if we get bottled up inside in the town... Uh, it's going to re result in a, in, in a lot of uh, a lot of town fighting and um, you know a lot of casualties and and not really being able to bring a large amount of troops to bear because the only place we can really funnel them is 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 over the bridge. Uh, I know there's secret forts and stuff, but I can never find them. It seems like only the AI can find them. So uh, I, generally, the best way is to bring them over the bridge. Um, even though I, I kind of know where they are for the AI, whenever I try to cross, the pathing just takes me back to the bridge. So uh, I've never quite figured out how to make use of the secret fords. It seems like only the AI can. Um, so uh, what we really have to do here is, uh, we're, first thing we're going to do is set up a line uh, basically in front of Vavra. Uh, in, 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 in kind of on the other side of the dial, on our side of the dial. <clears throat> now, if you remember what I said in the last uh, um, episode, in the Prussian version of the scenario, I told you that some of the, uh, the Prussian units in the front of the town are in pretty shaky shape. Um, their morale is hit, their, uh, their fatigue is hit, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty beat up. Now, what we did is we pulled them immediately out of action to preserve them so we'd have them later um, and let them recuperate when we played the, as the Prussians. In this scenario, the AI, of course, doesn't do that. They stand there, they get shot, they run away. So the, the opening few minutes basically give you um, 
the ability to get a foothold in in inside of Vavra. It's almost like a bait, though. You don't want to take it right away because there are fresh units right behind, and you cannot get enough units over the bridge in time before these units get counterattacked. Um, you want to stay away from the courtyard. We want what we want to do is where we can want it to control the courtyard as the Prussians, as the French. We kind of want to stay away from it because there's a lot of Prussian units on the outside of the town that are constantly going to be coming in and trying to attack that position. It's vulnerable to cavalry. Cavalry can get into the courtyard, so it's not a great position for us. However, because the Prussians try to control it, what we can do is set up a battery on the opposite side of the dial with skirmishers in front that's going to focus on that courtyard and kind of anywhere on the right side of it. So that anytime the Prussians try to move through the town and into that courtyard, they're going to get pulverized by artillery. Um, so what we're going to do is basically control the courtyard by having artillery on the other side of the dial. So rather than having troops there, we're going to control control it by whenever the Prussians try to move into it, we're going to bomb the hell out of it. Um, really how we're going to get in, in, uh, the advantage here is not trying to really make a big push at Vavra. As I said, it's very hard to do. There's just no way to maneuver uh, and, and get a lot of troops uh, uh, across the river and into the town because there's just no way to deploy. There's no way to bring your guns to bear. There's no way to bring your cavalry to bear. So it's like you can get a few infantry units into the street, but you're, you know, you're constantly going to be attacked by, by Prussian skirmishers. You're constantly going to be harassed by their cavalry. Um, so really what we want to do is what we, is shift over here to the bridges uh, and, and cross at the two bridges. It's very similar to what we did in the brigade scenario, Hulot attacks. We're going to get some troops across, establish a bridgehead, and then we're going to start funneling divisions, cavalry, artillery, everything we can, we're going to funnel across at the Beerges. And then once we drive off the initial defenses in here, we're going to sweep eastwards and get behind Vavra. Once we get behind Vavra, we can move troops up and secure the objective and hold on to it uh, without it constantly changing hands um, or being um, contested by the Prussians because they move within range of it. Um, we're going to move in and get control of the objective before any of this ever happens, but it will kind of, we'll have it, then we won't have it, we'll have it, then we won't have it, because there's all sorts of Prussians outside of the town, and we really can't, they've got artillery, they got cavalry out there, so we're kind of only safe in the town uh, with the few with the few troops that we can get in there. So we will get up to the objective, but our, our control of it will kind of waver. Um, that's why we're going to cross at the Beerges, we're going to start off with the Foles Division, uh, just kind of like we did in Ligny. Uh, we're going to send LaFolle's division and a cavalry brigade over. We're going to get one brigade over uh, over the beer, just attack the infantry. Different than what we did in Hulot attacks, uh, the brigade scenario, where it was first the artillery we had to attack. Uh, here, the artillery is kind of a little further, a little further east. It's not as much of a threat, so we can cross. The, we can cross the bridges and attack the infantry first and get the guns later. The main thing we want to do is get at least a brigade over, establish, get control of the objective over here to establish a bridgehead. Once we do that, we can bring the rest of LaFolle's division over, we can start bringing cavalry over, we can bring artillery over. Once we do that and have control of this area, then we can begin to sweep eastward and get behind, uh, start cross this little stream here, establish ourselves in here, and start to push eastwards behind Vavra. Once we do that, our control of the objective will no longer be contested because we'll begin pushing the Prussians kind of eastward this way and northward that way. Um, in the meantime, uh, reinforcements are constantly going to be arriving. We'll start to shuttle divisions across the bridge and bring them over to reinforce this position, as well as send some cavalry and Peugeot's division and Test division uh, to attack Le Malle. Um one of the reasons I'm going to send such, uh, you guys remember from the last episode, that there's not much really going on over here. Um, one of the reasons I'm going to send such an overwhelming force to this position is so um, I don't have to pay too much attention to the attack. The, the attack is so lopsided in the French favor that it's like, I can just pop over, control a few things, and then go back to what's really going on over here. Um, it's not until much later in the scenario that we really get control of that anyway. Um, so most of the action is going to be over here. Now, the thing about 
uh, this scenario is you have to know how hard to attack and when you can kind of pull back and, uh, and reestablish yourself. There's a certain kind of point guideline I'm going to go by um, uh, with this scenario. This is not a scenario you're going to beat by that you're going to beat by a uh, a huge margin, uh, so to speak. It's it's very hard to do that. Whereas you know in the last scenario in um, the Prussian version of this battle, we needed 15,000 points for a major victory. We scored like 20 something. You know we we really clipped it by a large margin. Um, in this scenario, uh, if we scroll down a little bit here, a little bit more, we'll see that we need uh, 10,000 points for a major victory. Now, not quite as much as we needed as the Prussians, but as the Prussians, we started off in control of all four objectives. So that's why the Prussian version, you needed 15,000 points. Uh, in this scenario, you need 10,000 points because obviously you're on the attack. You don't have control of all the, you have none of the objectives at the beginning. Um, however, as I said, the objectives alone are not going to get you anywhere near 10,000 points. So you have to keep on the attack, even after you capture the objectives. You have to keep attacking the Prussians. But how hard do you attack? How hard do you need to push it? Um, and that's why I have a certain point guideline. Basically, it goes some kind of something like this. The scenario is two hours long. It goes from 1,400 to 1,600. By about 30 minutes into the scenario, you want to be looking at about 2,500 points. You know, if you're closer to 3,000 points, eh, so much the better, but no less than 2,500 uh, 2, points. You want to be about a quarter of the way. By an hour into the scenario, you need to be halfway there. You need to be about 5,000 points, uh, uh, you know, halfway to a major victory by one hour into the scenario. So by, um, by 1,500 you want to have at least 5,000 points. By this point, you should be over the Beerges in force, meaning you've got Foles division over, you've got your artillery over, you've got your cavalry over, uh, and you're starting to push eastward. At this point, you got to turn up the heat a little bit. You got to push eastward, and um, you know by about an hour into the a half into the scenario meaning you've only got 30 minutes left, you want to be at about 8,000 points. Um, because as you start to push eastward and get behind Vavra, there's going to be more Prussian resistance, and you're not going to be able to attack with reckless ferocity. Um, so two things are going to happen at this point. One, if you push the Prussians out from behind Vavra, you're going to get control of the Vavra objective without it going back and forth, without it being contested. So that's going to become a more solid source of points. You will have already had control of the Beerges objective for a while, so that'll be another solid source of points. You want to start funneling troops over as they come in. Hulot's division, uh, Vichery's division, uh, and start bringing them over the uh, the uh, the bridge at Vavra, as well as the two little bridges kind of to the the west of Vavra, and start just building up your force so that um, you're able to start grinding on the Prussians. Um, probably within like the last uh, 20 minutes or so of the scenario, you will should be you should capture Le Male. Um, that is not really hard to drive off um, the small Prussian force garrisoning Le Male. Uh, and control that objective. And if you do everything right, you should clip 10,000 points um, at about 10 minutes or so before the scenario ends. Um, so that's basically kind of what you want to do. If you are ahead of the game, you know, if you hit, if you hit um, 6,000 points or something within an hour of the scenario, you're ahead of the game. You still need to keep attacking, but you're ahead of the game. You know, um, if you get to a half hour, uh, with you know, an hour and a half into the scenario, and you're at nine thousand points, you're ahead of the game. At that point, you know, the objectives are going to give you, you know, three hundred points or so every uh, every five minutes. Bring your guns up. You know, use uh, line infantry and skirmishers to start to just to keep shooting at the Prussians and gaining points. Um, 
but that's basically like my guideline. Right? Half hour in the scenario, you want to be at 2,500 points. If you're below 2,500 points, you need to attack harder. You need to bring more troops forward. You need to push harder. You need to move faster. You know, As long as you're above 2,500 points a, a half hour into the scenario, you're on point. You got to keep attacking, but you're on the road to a major victory. Like I said, an hour into the scenario, you want to be halfway there at 5,000 points. If you're not, if you're below 5,000 points, you need to turn up the heat, move faster. Um, and like an hour into the ha an hour and a half into the scenario, with only 30 minutes left, you want to be at or over 8,000 points. Uh, and no matter what, you should be turning up the heat at that point. You outnumber the Prussians by a huge margin. They have something like 17,000 men. You have, you will eventually, once all the troops arrive on the field, have something like 30,000 men. Um, so, you know, you have plenty of forces to spare. So, you know, when you use a force to, um, you know, push Prussian forces back, attack them, make them, uh, you know, make them retreat. Um, don't go and slaughter those forces. Don't go and lose points. Just pull them back, let them regroup, and bring up fresh forces. Just keep cycling in fresh forces that you know are always going to get the best of it. Um, because this is not a situation where you want to lose a lot of points, you know, uh, because you're, you're, you're constantly chasing the clock in this scenario. Um, you know, trying to, trying to make sure you hit those kind of um, preset kind of point goals at those certain times, you know, and, and, and that's just a way to, to make sure you're on track uh, as far as, as being able to get enough points within two hours. 10,000 points is a lot of points to, to try and accrue in two hours. And uh, that's why I came up with this system to help you guys know if you're on track or if you're behind or ahead. So like I said, 30 minutes into the scenario, you want to be at about 2,500 points or above. But if you're below 2,500 points, turn the heat up. If you're an hour into the scenario, if you're at or above 5,000 points, you're good. You still want to keep attacking, but you're good. You're ahead of the game or you're on point. If you're below 5,000 points, again, turn the heat up, attack, move faster. Um, and like I said, an hour and a half near the end of the scenario, you know, when you hit like seven, um, I'm sorry, like 1630, or I'm sorry, 1530, um, with only a half hour left, you want to be at or uh, past 8,000 points, bare minimum, 8,500 is really good, but it can be done at 8,000 points. Uh, but you got to keep attacking, you always got to keep attacking. And at, at, at any point, you know, 30 minutes in, an hour in, an hour and a half in, if you're below those kind of, um, the bar that, that I'm setting for you guys at, with points, turn up the heat. If you, if you keep moving at the speed you're moving, you're going to not, you're not going to make it. Um, you have to kind of keep always ahead of the clock and always make sure that when those, when those intervals hit, um, that you're at or above these points, the kind of point bars that I'm, I'm setting for you guys. Um, and that's, that's basically it. It's not a difficult, I'm sorry, it's not a complicated strategy. Um, but it's just, you just got to keep on the attack. You always got to keep on the attack and, uh, keep accruing points, get control of the objectives, leave a holding force to occupy them, you know, a, a brigade or a couple of battalions to keep, and an officer to, um, to, to keep control of the objective, but don't sit there holding it. Like that's going to, that, that, that's going to do anything for you. It's not, they just don't, they just don't generate enough points. They help because they're a steady source of points as you keep attacking, but by themselves, the objectives are not going to do the job. You have to keep attacking. The objectives work in conjunction with the strategy of keep attacking. You have the forces. Um, you know, if you need the AI to help you, in terms of, you know, maybe not micromanaging every single thing on the field, grab officers, uh, uh, you know, of cavalry. I especially like to do this with cavalry, you know, leave them under AI control and set them to all out attack and, you know, give them uh, an attack objective on the command map where you want them to hit. The AI can carry out attacks, you know, and as you see opportunities, uh, you know, you can 
Oh, I see a, I, I see a chance to charge a battery. Here's a squadron. Grab control. Take TC it and, and take out the battery. You know, I'll do that a lot. You know, even though I'm not controlling the entire cavalry brigade or the entire cavalry division, if I see an opportunity, I'll grab hold of a squadron or two and, and, and take it, you know. Um, but, yeah, if you need the AI to help you out and, and there's too much going on, too much to control, use it. AI is not terrible as long as you know how to use it uh and how to you know use the attack stances and and the command map to give the officers and the troops objectives uh the ai is perfectly capable of carrying out attack the ai gets a lot of slack in this game because people don't know how to use it but if you guys have watched the grog toolbar demystified series i've already taught you guys how to use it so don't be afraid to call on it for help because this is um this is definitely a scenario where there's just a lot going on and it never freaking stops, you know. Now, I'm a big micromanager. I've had a lot of practice micromanaging, so I tend to micromanage a lot. But even I will sometimes still use the AI for cavalry. Um, I, you know, I send the troops that I'm going to send over to the Male. I send them over under AI control. I let them kind of start their attack under AI control. And only when I see... Uh, them really involved will I get in will I get involved myself and and start uh, directing the battle a little bit more um, you know but uh, like, yeah don't be afraid to um, let the AI um, start doing certain things uh, once you just when you just want an attack to happen you know when you're gonna do something that requires finesse like getting the foals division across the bridges or something on that that first attack across the bridges yeah that you want to control because the AI will just mess that all up. But you guys know how to get troops across the bridges because I showed you guys that in episode, was it seven or eight? Oh God, I don't remember. I think it was eight and that was Hulot attacks. And it's much the same here. Um, Although here, I think I use a lot of waypoint movement to actually just get units across the bridges very, very quickly. But I'll explain that when we get to, uh, when we actually get to that in the video. Um, so that's basically it for the strategy session, guys. It's it's this is a hard scenario. I'm not going to lie to you. You're not. It takes it takes practice. It really does, um, because uh, it's a lot to control. It's one thing when you have a lot to control, but you're on the defense, and it's a whole different ball of wax when you have a lot to control and you have to attack. Um, you know. So you know, like I said, like I said, don't. Uh, you know, don't be discouraged if you don't make it on the first or second attempt. It, it, it can take some practice. Um, but my favorite uh, strategy when it comes to the scenario is, like I said, um, setting up a holding line in front of Ravra while we move south and cross at Beerges, which is much, much less heavily defended. Once we get enough forces across. Then we can sweep eastward towards Vavra and up above Vavra and start to push the Prussians back away from it. Um, and that's, yeah, that's basically the strategy for this. So uh, what do you say we uh, we get started here, guys? Oh, one other thing. Uh, just like in the um, the Prussian scenario, uh, your, none of your troops start off under take charge uh, in this scenario. So if you don't want your army running off and doing God knows what... Uh, then as soon as the scenario boots up, TC all subordinates to lock your forces in place. Now, all your forces have attack orders at the beginning of the scenario. If you don't TC them, they will start attacking, and that is one way to get the battle going faster. But to me, in my opinion, they don't attack the way I would want them to attack. So I TC everybody, and then I start doing things my way. But uh, it's not necessarily the wrong move to leave your forces forces off tc for a, a minute or two and let the ai start moving some of your forces into position to attack um it's not necessarily the wrong move it does get things going faster and speed is essential in in this scenario but it's really um it's re it's really your call if you guys feel comfortable doing that letting the ai initially start moving your forces and then you try to get control of the situation as it's happening. Me, I lock the, arm, the forces down and then and then I start to carry out the attack as I want to. That's slower, but it's more controllable. So you're trading speed for control uh, or, and the other way you're trading control for speed. Um, I'm not necessarily saying one way is more right than the other. Um, if you're 
you know, comfortable letting the eye handle your troops and um, uh, and only getting involved with what you need to get involved, um, you know, you can start out this way. But I can tell you, you're going to have to take more and more control as it goes on because the AI will just never attack as hard as you will. That's just proven fact. Um, so, all right. I think we're about done here. Uh, let's get this. Let's get this going. And like I said, we need 10,000 points for a major victory. All right, and there I am. I have just TC'd all my troops, so none of them start moving. And uh, here comes our courier. We have 24,595 troops initially. More troops are will be arriving. Like I said, it's something like 33,000 troops that are, uh, uh, we have at the end. All right, so to Marshal Grouchy, Monsignor Le Marshal, you wrote this morning at 6 o'clock to the Emperor that you would march upon Sarah Valaine. Then your project was to go to Corbeil and to Vavra. This movement is in accordance with His Majesty's orders, which were communicated to you. The Emperor, however, commanded me to tell you that you must keep maneuvering in our direction. It is your duty to see how we stand in order to act accordingly and to join forces with us so that you may always be ready to engage and crush whatever troops of the enemy may attempt to disturb our right wing. At the moment, the battle on the Waterloo side is already won. The enemy center is at Mont Saint Jean, so do your best to join our right. Uh, Le Duc de Dalam. I have no idea what that. I am sorry, guys. My French is just that freaking bad. I don't even know what that says. Uh, P.S. A letter which has just been intercepted brings the news that General Boulot is to attack our right flank. We think we see his regiment on the heights of Saint Lambert. So do not therefore lose an instant in coming and joining us in crushing below, whom you will take in, oh boy, flagrante delicto? I assume that means in the flank, uh, but I could be wrong. I, I, I really don't know what that says. Um, so, okay, so those are our orders, uh, and uh, basically, yeah, attack the Prussians at Vavra and try and move towards Waterloo, which is not really part of the scenario. Really, we just have to hit the Prussians as hard as we can. Alrighty. Whew. All right, so we got a strategy session out of the way. We got our courier orders. All right, finally, my mouth can close for a second. And this will close in a second. I just left myself a lot of time to read it but I wasn't sure how much time I left, so I just paused the video. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is scroll up at Vavra, and you can see uh, one of our battalions is already shooting it out. This is a weak, shaky battalion. They're not going to last long. So what we're going to do is immediately move our infantry right to the other side of the river. Uh, we're going to move uh, these guys and bring them back behind. The reason is there's a lot of Prussian artillery back here, and we just don't want to leave these guys over here to get pounded on. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is bring our guns up. Again, we want to have our guns in this position so that we are always have the uh, the courtyard here in canister range. Because any Prussian units that try to move through here, you can see there's a lot of Prussian units on the right, kind of the right side of the town. Now, any Prussian units that try to move through here, they're going to get hit with the hit with canister. And uh, we've already begun opening fire on this unit over here. And we're deploying some skirmishers as well. Uh, as soon as we get the guns in place, we'll move this infantry line out of the way and let the skirmishers take over. The next thing we're going to do is bring up a battery to start pounding the Prussian uh, right uh, part of Wavre. Basically, these troops over here. We want to set up a battery kind of in here to just start pounding away on them. You can see the shaky Prussian unit is already retreating. And this unit I'm going to send as the <coughs> the unit that I will deploy skirmishers from to guard the battery. So I'm sending them over there. 
and I'm going to deploy this unit in line so that I have a bunch of line infantry here uh, set up to completely outgun the Prussians here. So we're not rushing across the town here. We're first gaining control. Control is more important. The objectives are, uh, you know, you want to get them, but they're not so important that you need to rush and get them because having control of the situation and being able to inflict losses on the Russians is almost as important, if not more important. All right, so our guns are up, so uh, now we're going to start kicking out skirmishers to get in front of them. Uh, and once we do that, we will move this, uh, this line infantry unit and get them out of the way so that the way, uh, the line of sight of the guns uh, is basically covering everything over here. The courtyard, this area. We've got skirmishers protecting the right flank of the guns already, and we're moving skirmishers in front of the battery, so we're setting up a whole skirmisher line in here to basically dominate the courtyard. As opposed to put it, trying to get our own troops into the courtyard, our own troops would be vulnerable all the time. We'd constantly be getting par harassed by the Prussian infantry, by the Prussian cavalry, and uh, just, it's not worth it. It's better to just control the control the courtyard this way. All right, so there we go. We're getting our uh, we're getting our line unit out of the way to open the way for the uh, the line of sight for the guns. We're already opening with canister fire on these guys. This was a shaky Prussian unit, so they're already falling back. Uh, and we're also opening up on this Prussian skirmisher unit with canister. And uh, he over here, we're just basically waiting to get our guns into position. And I'm going to kick out yet one more skirmisher unit to basically take the place uh, of of the, uh, the the oh no I got them up there already okay I, I thought I didn't no there is two skirmisher units up here and you can see the artillery is doing a great job of bombing away on these units and driving them back. Now, canister fire doesn't have quite the same effect on skirmishers that it does on uh, more, more dense formations, but it will eventually make them run. <coughs> Our skirmishers are doing okay, about, e about even, which is what you would expect with skirmisher units versus skirmisher units. All right, we've driven the Prussians back from the forward area of Vavra, and... Almost immediately, we want to get a hold of Lefol's division and send them over uh, near the Beardrits because it's going to take them a while to set up. Uh, so we just want to get them going over there to begin with. You know, we'll keep them out of the range of uh, the guns over there, and we're just going to basically set up back here. And once we're in position, then we'll worry about moving across. You can see the guns are a little further over. In the brigade scenario, Hulot attacks, the guns are like right here. So you have no choice but to cross the bridge and hit them right away. But in this scenario, they're further over. So you can cross the bridges and go for the infantry first. All right, so this is very different than what the French did when we played as the Prussians, where they just tried to hurl themselves headlong across... Uh, across the bridge. They ate up a few Prussian battalions doing that, but ultimately they couldn't get enough troops across the bridge to hold on to it. And, and, and just by sending our reserves forward, we were able to drive them back. So the same thing would happen if we tried to attack like that. So we're not gonna. We're gonna be smart. Why is that not disappear bottom thing? There we go. All right, so I'm sending skirmishers out in front of the battery to protect the battery, like I normally do. And um, we're not in canister range of any of these units, but we are close enough that we're over time we're going to do some damage to them. 
and later on I'm going to bring up another battery to start shooting them from, uh, from the flank. So as you can see, more Prussian units are trying to move in. They're trying to get into the courtyard to gain control of it. Um, and, and, and we control it. I mean, we just our, our artillery is in a perfect spot to just dominate the courtyard uh, anytime Prussians try to come into it. And you can see the canister fire is a ripping. And this unit coming forward will also have to eat it. Now at this point, I think I'm going to start sending a couple of units across uh, the bridge to gain control of the open area on the uh, on, on this side of the town and maybe some of the streets. Because the Prussians are now, they got all their attention over here. So you do want to make for the objective, but just understand that your, con your control of it will probably waver back and forth. Until we can really drive the Prussians out from behind Mabra. And we're also going to try and gain control of this area. We'll set some skirmishes up. We've got artillery protecting us now, so it makes it real hairy for some of these units to try and move closer to us. Um, because uh, they'll come into canister range of that battery. The Foles Division is making way for the, uh, for the Beerges, and we're also going to grab some of Exelman's cavalry uh, and move them forward. Uh, we're going to actually move the entire core forward. Um, but we'll send a brigade to uh, to the Beerges. All right, so here's Exelman. He's got 3,000 uh, cavalrymen in his corps uh, and uh, some artillery. And uh, we're just going to start, we're going to move them forward kind of towards the Beerges. And he's got a lot of men, so... Uh, you know, we have to set them up a little further back and, and not get in the way of La Folle, but just to start getting them forward. That's the basic idea. Core, you can only choose the column by division. There's no other formation you can choose. So there we go. We're moving the entire core. You can see La Folle's division as well as his artillery moving forward. And this is the other battery we're going to bring forward so that we can start putting pressure on these units from the side, too. Kind of going to deploy them right in here. And uh, they'll start shooting at these units in the flank. And uh, they, they, do, they do good work. That's a good place to put this battery. All right, so we're starting to establish a little bit of a bridgehead here. We've got one unit across, and we're using it as a guard to get the rest of our units across into this area. And then we'll start moving. We'll start moving them forward, slowly but surely here. As you can see, it's very hard for the Prussians to keep a presence in this courtyard because our battery is just uh, has a tremendous field of fire. Uh, over this entire area. And we're going to see if we can also start controlling some of these side roads here. And of course, we're firing a lot of canisters, so let's get a supply wagon up here. The French guns do not carry anywhere near the amount of canister that the Prussian cannon do. So you really have to keep an eye on that. And we'll bring one for this battery as well. All right, so we've got a presence over the river now in the open area on the right side of Vavra. We'll deploy some skirmishers, and we just want to hold this position for now. Give the artillery time to soften up these troops over here. And I'm bringing an officer forward because maybe we can get up to the next line here and actually gain control of the objective. The Prussians seem more concerned with the courtyard and what's going on over here than they do the center of town. So maybe, you know, we're just trying to edge our way up and 
kind of see what we encounter from block to block to see if occupying the objective is viable yet. Now, I'm going to detach these skirmisher units because they're part of the brigade that I'm about to move, and I don't want them to move. So I'm just going to detach them. And uh, Habert is the division commander. I'm just going to back him off and get him out of the way. And I'm just going to move du du Dupriot's brigade up in double line, uh, and only because it's a tight area. <coughs> just to uh, keep a presence uh, on this side of the river and have them in formation to move across if we need them. There's still a lot of Prussian troops over here. Um, we're not ready to. We're not ready to kind of move against this yet. In fact, we're not going to move against it. We're going to hit them from the rear when we come over the Beerges. We just want to be able to hold this area because if the Prussians move in, uh, you know, we want to be able to basically guard the center of the town so that these troops here, if they're, if they can hold this position, it makes our troops in the center of the town safer. Alright, so I'm slowly winding my way up the roads here. Now we have control of the objective now. So I'm going to move this line and set them up here, move the officer right behind them, and set this unit up in line and control these two passageways here. And this is kind of the border of where we want to be. We won't want to go any further than this. We don't want to emerge into open areas where we could be attacked by cavalry uh, and, you know, really be an open target for Prussian units to move through. It's tough. It's going to be tough for them to get at us here because of the moving through the courtyard is going to put a real hurt on them. And, all right, Hulot's division of Gerard's Corps is in the lead as far as Gerard's Corps goes. Here he is. Uh, so we're going to bring him up and basically have him assume the spot that is currently being vacated by the cavalry, by Exelman's cavalry, and set him up there. <coughs> so there we go. I've taken everybody off of Take Charge except Hulot. And now I'm using, uh, I'm actually going to use the mini-map and just click on a location and have him set up in the standard divisional setup of uh, line with artillery front. So we're still selected on Hulot, so here we go. We'll just place him right here behind the, uh, uh, behind the rest of uh, Van Damme's forces and set him up in uh, uh, line with artillery front. We'll have him use roads and then we'll TC everybody to make sure they just go where I told them to go. All right, so LaFol is in position. We've got our guns set up over here that are shooting this, these units in the flank. This is a great spot for them. And we have control of the objective. We have control of the area on the left side of the town, and we have uh, some forces guarding the roads that approach the objective. Now, this doesn't mean the objective can't be contested. Prussian units can move in here, in here, that'll be close enough to contest it. But for right now, they're not paying too much attention to this area, and we're happy to not have it that way for now, because uh, we don't really want to antagonize them quite yet. There's a lot of, Pru we know there's a lot of Prussian forces behind here, and as long as they're staying there, right now we're happy to have them stay there, um, because all we have is three battalions, that's, that's, that's nothing. Um, you know, we need to get a large amount of forces across the Beerges and sweep eastwards to really be able to have an impact. Um, but the objectives are points, so we'll hold on to it uh, as long as we can. This, this unit has just taken a few losses from the Prussian artillery, so I'm just switching them and moving them over to the other side. So this battery has already racked up 75 points, uh, shooting into the, uh, the flank of those Prussian infantry units. I 
seem to have made a little misclick with this uh, with the supply wagon. This supply wagon is meant to be uh, for that uh, battery, and this supply wagon is meant to be for that battery. All right, so not bad so far. We have control of the objective. We have control of these side streets. We have the uh, the courtyard under artillery fire, which is making the Prussians very sketchy about trying to move through it. Uh, and we have some units in the open area at Vavra. So the situation at Vavra is stable for now. So uh, we can start thinking about getting across the Beerges here. It's very lightly defended. Uh, and if we can drive these three infantry units back, we can gain control of the objective, set up a bridgehead, and start bringing the rest of our division, as well as some cavalry, across and start sweeping eastwards. So as you can see, the Prussians have all pulled back here. They're like, oh boy, what do we do? Anytime we move into this courtyard, we're getting raped. Alrighty, so we have about 1,200 points, 20 minutes into the scenario. So uh, we're a little behind, uh, because we want to be, in, in another 12 minutes or so, we want to be at about 2,500 points. Uh, so we want to get a move on here. So we're going to get LaFold... LaFolle's division go and get across the Beerges, capture that objective, that'll be another steady source of points, um, and, you know, capture, you drive those infantry unit battalions off, capture the artillery, that'll be some points, uh, and, uh, you know, we'll just keep checking in on our point total every so often to make sure we're kind of ahead of, you know, at or ahead of the game. All right, so we've got three battalions uh, on the other side of the river in the open area to the right, uh, the left of Vavra. We've got some skirmishers set up, and we've got an artillery battery protecting us, so we should be okay. Now, I was initially going to attack with um, with Corson's brigade here, uh, but as I look at his units, they're kind of mm, small. You know, they're not like huge units. Um, you know, like 300, 400 men. And, uh, you know, I know these Prussian units are pretty big. 370 men, 370 men, 400 men. 400, not that big. I'm not... And because we got to go across these bridges one at a time, I have to hit these Prussian units one at a time. So I want bigger units, like this, 560 men. So, in all actuality, I decide it's better to attack. Let's uh, let's attack with Ballard's brigade. It's it's a bigger brigade. The units are bigger, uh, and they're more likely to succeed in charges uh, uh, against the Prussians because of their unit size. So we're going to move them forward and uh, start to bring their units across the bridges one at a time. And uh, just because their units have more men in them, uh, you know it. it it has a better chance of, of, of knocking the Prussian battalions back. Some of those Prussian, if you remember, a lot of those Prussian units are shaky, you know. Um, so as long as we have about equal men, I should win because I'm not shaky and they are. And uh, just keeping think, keeping an eye on things while uh, while Ballard's brigade gets gets ready to start moving. So the Prussians have sent out some skirmishers, but, uh, you know, moving into range to engage my skirmishers equals moving into range of the artillery, you know, so it's tough for them to even get their skirmishers going, and even though they have artillery superiority in terms of how many guns they have, as always, the AI will not bring them forward, they just leave them back where, where they're doing no good at all, you know, if they wanted to drive us off, all they need to do is bring, they got two batteries over. You know, all they need to do is bring them over, and that would make our position a lot hairier. But the AI doesn't do that. It never does. It, they're deployed. They're just going to keep firing from back there where they do no good at all. All righty. Now, before we get going with Ballard's Brigade, I just want to see what that unit is planning.
And uh, it looks like I'm going to bring one more unit up here just to make sure the bridge remains secure. <coughs> In case these guys try to go around our flank. But uh, no, it looks like they're trying to move uh, through these buildings here to attack this unit. And I'm going to hold steady here and open fire on them until they're out in the open and then I'll charge them. So that I inflict some losses on them before I even charge them. So this unit here has opened up on them and this unit will shortly open up on them. There they go. So now we're, we're opening fire on this unit. As soon as they kind of come out here, I'm going to hit them because they're not really in a formation. And here they go. They're moving towards me. They're getting fired on, and I'm going to charge them. Here we go. And uh, they didn't even they didn't even put up a fight. They just immediately withdrew. That was a bad spot for them. However, we're not going to pursue them. No, 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 no. We don't want to advance into their uh, into their realm of control. We're just here to guard these streets and protect the objective. All right, now that that's out of the way, we can begin to move across the beer juice. All right, so basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hold down the Alt key while right-clicking the beginning of the first bridge, the, the end of the set first bridge, the beginning of the second bridge, and the end of the second bridge. I'm gonna click on those four locations, uh, and this is called using waypoint movement. Each one of these is a waypoint as long as you hold the ALT key down. And that way the unit will move directly uh, across those bridges and not try to cross the river, which the AI doesn't know it can't do, but I know it can't do. And I'm just doing this with multiple units, sending them all across at once. So grab a unit, alt, hold the ALT key down, first, second, third, fourth. And just start sending them across. And as long as you do that, hold the all key and hit those waypoints, they will move directly across the bridge. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. These fools have moved forward. So let's, let's get them back. And I'm actually going to bring up a bigger unit to take their place in here. Alrighty, and uh, we've got three battalions going so far. Again, I'm holding the Alt key. I'm waypoint moving across uh, across the bridges. So uh, we've got four battalions of Ballard's Brigade on the move. And uh, we have pulled that Wiley Brigade back. And they're going to move again, because unfortunately I left them in column by division, and there's not enough room for them to form that. All right, so Vichery's division is arriving. So we're going to grab hold of them, and we're going to set them up uh, behind Hewlot. Hewlot is still on the move. They, the, all these troops have a long way to go. Um, so I'm just going to keep let them on the march and set up their position kind of right behind where I'm setting, where I have Hewlot set to go. So that's their position right now, but I'm going to adjust a little bit and move them, um, move them a little bit uh, further forward here. Put them behind, uh, behind um, Hewlot's division, which is kind of more going to be more up here. <coughs> All right, here we go. We should be getting close to being across the bridge here. All right. You'll notice they're, fi they're following their waypoints. They're moving directly across the bridges. And as soon as this unit gets across the bridge, we'll march right up and just slam them into this unit. All these units have shaky morale. They're not in good shape. Um, so we, we should be able to hit them and just drive them off. 
And we have 567 men. These are level 6 regular troops. Good troops, solid troops. Not the Imperial Guard, but definitely solid troops. They ought to win this, no problem. So they took seven losses from that volley. No big deal. Let's hit these guys. All right, so here we go. So yeah, no problem. No problem. They are absolutely running these guys off. They scored 36 points already. All right, good. So uh, we got involved with another melee here, again with these fools. Well, they drove the Prussians off, but boy, can they? Will they not go where I want them to go? They just—they're bloodthirsty. All righty. So we have one unit across. They're firing, but we need to—we need to hit this unit. Form them up in column by division, double quick, and we're going to send this other unit to hit this other infantry unit on the right here. And then we have another, uh, another infantry unit coming up in reserve. We're going to move these guys forward to continue shooting at, uh, at the unit we've already meleeed. Just so we're not trying to handle too many melees at once here. Now this unit is forming line automatically because I haven't given them orders, but I'm going to attack right now. Here we go. Alright, now we're taking over. There we go. Alright, so we've driven uh, that unit off. We've driven this unit off. Now let's go to the guns. The guns are not paying any attention to us. They're firing at whatever's going on over here. And uh, let's see if we can get these guns. And these guys have already been involved in a melee. They're going to lose 30 men for each for each gun they take. So they might not be able to take them all. Because every time they're losing men to crew the guns, yeah, you can see it kind of makes their morale dip. So they may not be able to get them all. And yeah, okay, they retreated. But we got another unit coming up. Let's see if we can get the rest of these guns. These guys are okay. They're retreating, but we'll, we'll bring them back. We'll bring them back. They'll be okay. These guns are trying to move off. And uh, let's hit what we can. Unfortunately, because we're so far to the left here, we're probably going to end up charging this infantry unit. So these guns are going to get to pull back. No problem. We'll get them later. The most important thing right now is that we're clearing the Beardgers out so that we can get our forces over. Alright, at this point, let's get B Ballard and the rest of his boys uh, and, and, and form up by the objective and get control of that objective.
These guns are pulling back, so they're not a threat to us right now. We can we can gain control of this objective. We still have this objective, so we're drawing points from that. We're a half hour into the scenario. At this point, we should be around 2,500 points. I am not sure whether I click on Grushi to see our point total right this second. But uh, we should be around 2,500 points at this point. see a bit of a Prussian battery back behind Vavra. Again, we don't have a lot of force in Vavra right now, so we're, we're just happy to hold our position without antagonizing uh, uh, any more than we have to. We're just happy to have the objective right now until we can get our forces across at the Birges. So uh, that artillery battery routed that uh, Prussian battalion. Good work, boys. And where is Ballard? We need to put him on run so he gets here as quickly as possible. There he is. Double quick, boys. We want him to get to that objective as quickly as possible. And we want to also start bringing our artillery over. And we will bring our other brigade under Corson over as well. Now, the Prussians are starting to regroup here. They've got one infantry battalion and they're deploying their guns again. And all we've got is two guns over here. So, uh, we need to get a move on. And we're also going to grab some of Exelman's cavalry. We're going to grab one brigade under Vincent here. Uh, and, and start bringing him across. Alright, so we have control of the objective. That's good. These guns are getting some points by firing canister into this, uh, this, uh, infantry battalion. You can see one battalion routed that, uh, had taken enough casualties. But these, we're outmatched here. These, these, these guns are gonna retreat. But we have the objective now. And we have lost the objective over here because some Prussian units have moved within range of it. Um, let's see if we can get them out of there to regain control of the objective. Oh, we have it again, but I still feel comfortable getting these guys out of here. So yeah, we only lapsed for, only lapsed for a couple of seconds. You can see more Prussians starting to move into the courtyard here. Hopefully our artillery will take care of them while we get this unit out of here. This is, a, this is a good unit, 460 men. This is a small Prussian unit. We should be able to wipe them out pretty quick. And they didn't even bother firing at us, so quickly they're, yeah, they're out of there. And again, we don't want to pursue them. These guys took a look at our artillery and said, nope, back we go. All right. So there's a lot of back and forth. I know this is kind of hectic, trying to get all these troops to move and do what we want them to do. So we're going to take uh, two battalions here of, of Billard's Brigade and set them up on this road here, just in line, just to keep these guys honest and keep them from doing anything. They're one battalion. They're no real threat. And here comes Vincent's Brigade. And Pichot's division is arriving on the field. Here is Hulot's division, our lead division, moving into position. And here is Pichot's division. All right, 2,600 points. We're a little kind of right even, I guess. Right, kind of right where we should be. We're at almost 2,700 points. So, uh... At 1630, we were probably right around 2,500 points. So uh, I'm gonna say we're right on we're right on point right now. Uh, as long as we keep pushing, keep attacking, uh, we should be good. Our next milestone is at 1,700 hours. We want to be at 5,000 points, and that's how we'll know we're still we're still on on 
on our game. So, unfortunately, our two guns that we captured have pulled back, and the Prussian infantry is beginning to move forward. But uh, Corson's brigade is making their way across. And there they go. And that's just the last unit of Ballard's brigade moving into formation. We'll put them behind the lines. So we've uh, now got control of uh, the Beerges objective and the Vavra objective. So it's a little bit more of a steady source of points now. So every five minutes we'll get 200 points. So it uh, boils down to about 40 points a minute. It's not amazing, but it's a still a steady source of points. Halt the leader so he doesn't get himself killed. So, uh, yeah, some of our guns are working or their way across the bridge. We've got Corson's Brigade uh, moving across the bridge. And uh, these guys are deploying into line because they've become in, into engagements, and so we'll actually turn them to face uh, this Prussian unit to uh, start shooting at them. Uh, and really, we're just trying to get Corson's Brigade across because once we do that, we can just charge that unit and get them the hell out of there. All right, so uh, everything looks pretty steady over here. We still control the objective. All righty, and while uh, while Corson's brigade is moving into position, uh, I'm going to quickly run to the fridge. I will be right back, guys. Alrighty, I'm back, guys. So uh, all we have standing before us here is one Prussian infantry battalion and some artillery further back. And uh, once we get them out of there, uh, we'll start really funneling a lot of forces over the bridge at the Beerges and begin to sweep uh, eastward towards Vavra. And uh, always mindful of the clock, I just want to get these guys out of here. So uh, I'm just going to try and hit him here and see if we can get him to break. And there they go. All right, so the Prussian battalion has fallen back. Our our next task is to get those guns. Now that, that minus 50 score on that battery commander, that's due to the fact that when we captured those Prussian guns that got routed, they became part of that battery. So we haven't really lost any of our guns, we just lost the guns we captured from the Prussians. So some Prussians have kind of made it across the, uh, 
the uh, courtyard here, but they're in a bad spot. They're getting shot at by this unit. We're moving a unit up, so they're just retreating. So, uh, we're, so far, we're doing a good job of being able to protect these side roads here and keep control of the objective. And we might as well just park this unit in column by division right here as an assault force. So uh, we still haven't lost any of our own men uh, from the artillery battery because we have our full 240. But they're pretty close to this Prussian artillery. So um, I want to send Corson's brigade to, uh, to, 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 to basically clear this out. I know that Prussian battalion is ready to break for good. Um, so we're going to send his whole brigade forward and uh, see if we can... See if we can clear them out. Now, they'll eat a little bit of canister fire as uh, they approach the position, but uh, I'm willing to for the sake of speed and getting those guns. Because once we wipe out this last little bit over here, the way to the Prussian rear is open. So yes, here comes the canister fire. It does hurt. But if we can get the last of these guns and get this Prussian unit out of here, uh, then we'll be in good shape to start bringing more units across. Not to mention, we're capturing all these guns and turning them into French guns. So, uh, yeah, the Prussians are... Again, again I, I felt that this unit, unit is very close to breaking. They've been charged repeatedly. Uh, and they've got a whole French brigade coming at them now. And we've captured every last gun. All right, good. Now you can see some of these Prussian forces are turning to face us. So let's reposition our guns. The cavalry has just figured out that it can't cross the river and is making its way to the bridge. I probably should have waypoint movement to them, but you know we were just handling so many other things. So let's uh, let's redeploy Corson's brigade and set them up in line, and uh, start shooting at these Prussians as they come up. And we'll deploy some skirmishers to protect the guns we just captured, because they'll actually do a decent job at firing into the Prussian flank. And once again, the objective at Vavra has been contested. Uh, and oh, ooh. The Prussians charged us with cavalry and drove our units back across the river. And they're really starting to push forward. Alright, so we gotta handle a little emergency over here. Alright, so some more artillery is arriving, but I can't worry about it right now. That's the artillery reserve of Dipoli, but uh, minor little crisis we have to handle here. Somehow a Prussian cavalry squadron has snuck in and run our units off. Now, our guns are pulverizing anything that's trying to move across here. I don't believe there's any Ford here. I don't believe these Prussian units can really cross. Their flag is not across the river yet. Let's get these skirmishers uh, in front. See how they're kind of moving sideways? I don't think they can cross. I don't think there's a ford here. I also don't think the cavalry can get across, so... We should be able to get some skirmishers out and drive these guys back. We're also bombing away on the cavalry here with canister fire, and there's nothing they can do about that. 
So, yeah, this, this unit is just sashaying down the river. It cannot get across, and so it's going to get mangled by our guns. So a minor little crisis there, but the river actually saves us there because the Prussians can't actually get across it, whereas we can retreat across it because when a unit retreats, um, it ignores... Um, it ignores uncrossable terrain. <clears throat> so we were able to fall back across the river and be relatively safe. So we're going to deploy a skirmisher unit here to protect these guns uh, So while they bomb canister on, away on these units. And the rest of our line is getting into position. And these guns are doing good work over here. The cavalry is uh, moving into position to get uh, across the Birges. The Prussians are running away. I formed this unit formed into square, uh, so the cavalry can't get at these two units. So we are really pounding away on these Prussian units here. We have lost control of the objective, but, you know, it's not worth a lot of points. We're getting a lot more points from this, believe me. They're just, they're getting mangled. Mangled. Yeah, so having this gun battery here is, is, is like Fort Knox. The, the Prussians can't cross the river, and they're just getting mangled. So already, the Prussian, just this, this line that we set up along with the guns, the Prussians are just melting away down here. We've got our cavalry moving in uh, uh, across the Birges. And some Prussian units are trying to move in uh, on this unit here, so we're going to turn and face them kind of this way and start shooting at them. Now, we don't have control of the objective, but neither are we going to try and get pushed off of it, because if we can clear out these Prussians, we'll gain control of it again. And like I said, we are putting a massacre on these units. We're getting way more points from this than we ever would from the objective. So, you know, it's, it's not awful that we don't have control of the objective. As long as we're gaining points, and believe me, we're gaining a ton of points from this. These guys are trapped. They can't do anything. You know, and, and, and they're just trying to get out of the situation. They're not even shooting at us. We're just pounding them to dust. Now, my thought here is maybe I can get a unit. I don't think cavalry can charge in a town. So if I can get this unit uh, across, we can might be able to get enough tro troops within range of the objective again. I think these guys are taking a beating anyway from the artillery. I don't think they can charge anymore. So these guys look like they're running. I'm going to see if I can bring these guys up in a kind of a secondary line right behind the objective. These guys are just trying to get out of here and they're getting shot to pieces. And this whole thing has basically been broken up. Prussians are continuing to fall back before our uh, line of infantry. As soon as I get the situation in Vavra under control, I will begin sweeping eastward now. The cavalry is making its way across. So uh, these Prussian units are pulling back again. Now we have control of the objective once again. And 
I think this Prussian cavalry squadron is just trying to get the hell out of here safely. Now we do have one Prussian squadron, ca uh, skirmisher squadron, kind of standing in the river here. Let's see if we can get some skirmishers on this side of things to shoot them out and uh, get them really out of here. So we again have possession of the objective. Yeah, that's not going to work. You can't form square in the town. Let's send them over and take up this position along the side road again. Again, at this point, I'm just banking that this cavalry squadron is done. <coughs> and maybe what I'll do is deploy a skirmisher unit and see if I can't get them in position to actually shoot at the cavalry and really run them out of there. See if I can uh, get it, get them on the bridge, get them in range to shoot at the cavalry. So you'll notice, just without doing anything, just having artillery and our infantry set up, the Prussian uh, right at Vavra is collapsing. Units are pulling back. And uh, let's see if we can bring some artillery to bear. Deploy some more skirmishers. Looks like these guys are getting ready to run. Uh, once again, our objective is contested. I said at first, it's going to go back and forth. And uh, let's hit this unit as they come up here and see if we can drive them back. Here's a nice, decent-sized unit. They're getting, looks like they're doing good. They're getting the best of it. These Prussians should withdraw. And again, we're not going to pursue them. We just want to control these side roads to protect the objective. And again, we've re regained control of the objective. And uh, Morin's cavalry division is approaching. Again, more troops just keep on approaching. And uh, I believe Morin's division is the first uh, unit I send towards Lamale. I think we've got enough troops coming. We've got uh, Hulot's division is already on the field. Uh, and um, Vichery's division is right behind him. So I think we've got enough. That's two divisions. Uh, I think we have enough troops. And uh, let's uh, let's start advancing and pushing eastwards here. Von Thielman is already uh, in trouble, so uh, I'm going to bring the cavalry up and uh, see if we can uh, start pushing eastwards and 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 getting around the Prussian flank here. And we'll move uh, Corson's brigade up uh, on the southern part of the field here.
So yeah, we have a lot of troops back on the field now. We can start bringing, uh, we can definitely start bringing troops forward here. With the, with the collapse of this, uh, the Prussian right here, uh, we can start really starting to swing, bear pre bring pressure to bear from both the front and the, and the Beerger side of things now. So we're going to bring, uh, another brigade forward and, uh, really start to gain control of the, uh, the Vavra situation. And now, like I said, I don't think this cavalry can do anything. I don't think they can charge us. Not in the town like this. They're just getting shot at. I think they're just trying to get out of here. Alright, so with the withdrawal of that cavalry, we again have control of the objective. You can recall these skirmishers, they weren't really needed. And we've lost the objective again. Like I said, it's just, it's gonna keep bouncing back and forth like this for a while. So, okay, we are at 4,800 points. So, mm, right around where we should be, but, you know, about 100 points. I think at, at uh, 1,700, we'll probably be about 100 points short. So, we're right about there, but we need to pick up, we need to pick up the heat a little bit and, uh, and start pushing eastwards with uh, the forces that we've begun to cross at the Beerges here. All right, so Corson's brigade is still in pretty good shape. They've only taken, you know, six, 70 casualties or so. Um, so we are we're gonna bring them up in line and just start shooting shooting these Prussians. Um, the large brigade over here, uh, we're just gonna let them sit here and occupy the objective because we're gonna bring. Now that we have control of this area. We don't really need to cross at the bridges anymore. We can just start crossing at these bridges right here and this bridge here, and uh, you know we can start bringing forces from Hulot's division up and, and, and so forth. So you can see here's a whole other brigade. We're moving into position, and we're really going to start pressuring the Prussians around, uh, kind of around Wavra and get in behind it. Once we do that and push them eastwards, then this will not be contested anymore. The only reason it's contested right now is this Prussian unit's out here. See, I can't see them, but they're out here. You know, they're just, they're in range to contest the objective. But as we move forward here and start sweeping eastward, these, this is all going to collapse. You can see Corson's brigade moving up, the cavalry moving up. We bring our guns forward. And we also have units crossing at... Wavra too, so they're going to get it from here and from here. <clears throat> How much dividends did this whole thing pay here? I mean, this was this was kind of the key to the whole thing. Uh, being able to control the center of the town because we just we're molly whopping anything that comes in here. So the uh, the Prussians have sent a skirmisher unit to face our line unit. And uh, we are sweeping eastward from the Beerges here. Our cavalry is moving into position. And uh, as well as uh, Corson's brigade. And we're going to start pressuring the Prussian infantry with our cavalry here. They're either going to have to form square or they're going to break.
move some of these skirmisher units up. And you can see our other brigade moving across the river. More troops coming across the bridge. So we're starting to we're starting to funnel our troops into the town and get we want to get them to the left side of the town and start sweeping around behind it. That's the that's the general idea of what we're doing here. You can see we have a lot of troops on the field now. This is uh, Hugh Lott's division and Vichery is behind it. Uh, and now that we have control of these two bridges, uh, we can start crossing here uh, and, and be much closer. You can see the Prussians are beginning to fall back as the, the cavalry approaches. Actually doing fine against these skirmishers here. And these guys don't need to be in square anymore. And you can see this unit is just getting bombed on by the canister. By all means, sit there and get bombed by it. And the whole Prussian, my cavalry's going bananas. The whole Prussian right has collapsed at this point. Let's move, uh, we can start moving Corson's brigade forward. Start bringing the guns forward, keep everything moving forward. Keep the pressure on. So we're at 5,200 points at about 1,700, so right where we should be, we're on point. <clears throat> we now have 40,000 men on the field. I don't recall Krushi having 40,000 men. I thought it was around 30,000 men. Our cavalry is uh, sweeping the field here. Corson's brigade is continuing to move forward. Again, we're still toggling back and forth here with this uh, with this objective. All right, so here is uh, DeFore's brigade. Now the cross at the lower bridges, we can start bringing them forward. And now, uh, yeah, we're starting to push. We want to push around and behind Vavra here. So, uh, all right, so Vincent's cavalry has pushed a lot of the Prussian forces back, but uh, I'm sure he's getting a little tuckered out, his cavalry. So uh, we may need to go grab some more of Exelman's cavalry and start bringing them uh, over. But the skirmishers are withdrawing, and again, we now have possession of the objective again. And I think at this point I'm going to start sending troops towards, uh, this Pajol's cavalry has arrived, and I'm going to start sending troops towards Lamale. So uh, we have Valens Cavalry Brigade. So, uh, yeah, okay, we got a whole bunch of cavalry over here. So let's just, uh, let's just grab the whole division. 
Morin's division, and we're gonna send them. We're gonna send them to uh, to Lamale. And again, for now, I'm just gonna let the AI handle the attack. I'll put them on all-out attack. Let them head for Lamale. Um, all right, who is this? I think this is maybe uh, Pasho. Okay, this is Pasho's division. We're also gonna send them to Lamale. I believe. And again, I'll let the AI handle it for now. Put them on all-out attack. These heroes have pushed forward again, so we gotta bring them back. And we'll have these guys move into their vacated position. So as you can see, the we've really started to push forward now. We've got cavalry across the, uh, the creek. We have two brigades of infantry, Corsons and DeFores. Let's see if we can catch these bozos in the rear. And uh, another square is withdrawing. See, a lot of these Prussian units are broken back here. These guys are broken. These guys are broken. These guys are falling back. This unit is formed square, but that's fine. We can keep them in square and shoot at them with our brigade. We'll cut them to pieces. Let's get our guns. Bring the guns. Bring the guns forward. Put them right in the space between the brigades here. Resupply these guns. They've been firing a lot of canister. I'm sure they're low. They've got almost 2,000 points. Guys are kind of facing the wrong way. So uh, we are really moving around behind the Prussian rear here. And uh, they are really falling back before our advance here. But let's not kid ourselves. They've still got some troops back here. And back here, I also think they have a lot of cavalry that I can't see yet. So I think we have pretty solid control of this objective right now. And we're moving to four forward in double line. I just want to keep our formation kind of compact. advancing uh, Corson's brigade as well. So we can see there's still some Prussian artillery out here. And they still got some scattered battalions and another battery here, so uh, still got our work cut out for us. See that skirmisher unit in the courtyard getting blasted to pieces. All right, so we've got some guns coming up. Everything's pretty secure here. And like I said, we're just going to leave uh, Ballard's brigade here to occupy the objective. As uh, they had a rough time of it crossing those bridges and uh, attacking those units. So we are really starting to get in rear of the Prussians now. 
We definitely control the entire left part of Vavra. And uh, we're gonna bring some more cavalry forward because uh, uh, Vincent has already done a lot. So I wanna make sure we keep a heavy cavalry presence here. So we're gonna bring in uh, the amulet uh, cavalry forward. And the Prussian guns are withdrawing at the approach of our infantry, so that's good. Uh, there is a Prussian cavalry squadron out here, which is why our units stopped in Form Square. And let's take this skirmisher unit here and see if we can slow this advance of this uh, of this battalion. See if we can force these bozos into square. We've forced three units into square here with this one squadron. And now I'm thinking, boys, can I get a hold of these guns? I have to run through a gauntlet of squares here to do it, but uh, let's see what we can do. Definitely losing some men, but uh, our morale is still good. Let's see if we can take out these guns. And here we go. So far, so good. Captured three guns, four guns, five guns, six guns. Break off the charge and head for this gun. And oh my, do the Prussians have a lot of cavalry back here. And here they come. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. Got our guns, let's head back behind our lines. And well, these, no reason for these guys to stand here getting shot at by the square. Oh, these guys have been intercepted. Alright, they're probably going to get catch a beating. Looks like we've gotten ourselves involved in another melee here. Looks like we're going to charge these guys. These guys are in good shape. they got high morale and high fatigue. And it's a pretty even fight so far. We're kind of wavering back and forth. And this, okay, it looks like we're slowly starting to get the edge here. Yeah, we're taking over. We're running away with it. They're going to pull back. And uh, again, we do not want to pursue them and get tangled up in all this. Let's get back to our side roads here. Now, there's a Prussian battery here that's actually putting a hurt on this unit. So let's see if we can take a cavalry squadron and just run them up like a smorgasbord. Yeah, they're bombing away with on this unit with canister. Let's see if we can get them back out of the way while we charge these guys. Uh, and this is a lot of this is just this is just a point smorgasbord right here. If we can run this battery up like this. Just run the squadron right up the whole battery. That's a lot of points. That's something like uh, 240 points, maybe. Or eight guns, maybe 320 points. So go, boys. Oh, and they're in good shape. They're nice and rested. They should be able to just eat this right up.
And we're getting involved in a cavalry melee here, but we got two, got a square right here, got a line right here. We should be able to shoot these guys up. And uh, these guys are crazy. Look at them. They're running this. They're running. Uh, oh, there's a lot of cavalry here, though. And Test Division has arrived. Test Division is actually part of Lobau's core, but they were detached to Grushi uh, for Vavra. And Test Division I will also send towards Lamale. I think we have enough troops here at this point. Uh, these guys are crazy. Crazy. Run, boys. Run. Get the hell out of here. It's Prussian cavalry everywhere. These dummies charged a square. They're getting mauled. And let's bring this line unit up to shoot at this square. If we're going to use our cavalry to force them into square, then let's benefit from it. Let's bring some line infantry up to shoot at them. Cavalry is running. Get out of there. Let's bring the uh, the guns up to a closer position where they can be more useful. So our cavalry has made it safe and sound back behind its lines. And we've got squares holding the Prussian cavalry at bay. So we're coming up on an hour and a half in. We should be at about... We're a little low right now. At about 1730, we want to be at like 8,000 points. We need to push harder. We're only at about 7,000 points here. We've got 40 minutes to go. Yeah, this goes from 1,600 to 1,800. So, uh, okay, we've got a lot of troops advancing on Lamale. They're nowhere near it yet, but... Uh, Yeah, use roads, fellas. No, I was still on the command map like a dummy, so I gotta redo this now. There we go. Minimap. Alright, so we definitely need to turn up the heat. We're a little bit behind. Not too bad. We can still get to 8,000 points by 1730. Just got to turn up the heat. I'm going to form a ring of squares here to protect uh, against the Prussian cavalry. And I'm going to move this line infantry unit out to start shooting at these squares. Yeah, I meant to even move the... I clicked on the wrong flag, that's all. I meant to move the, the line unit forward. Turning up the heat means bringing more troops forward. So we got Lagarde's Brigade, 2,000 men. Let's bring them up. We'll 
bring him up in column by division. He's got four battalions. All right, so we've got three squares here that are basically holding all this Prussian cavalry at bay. Uh, while our cavalry is forcing their infantry into squares. So this is what we need to take advantage of. It's the fact that we're able to force the... the we're able to force the Prussian infantry into square, and we can bring infantry against them to take advantage of it. While even though we're being forced into square over here, they don't really have any infantry to take advantage of it. And over here, square versus square is pretty even. What we want to be able to do is protect this line unit that's bringing line fire to bear. Seven thousand points. All right, so we need to get another five thousand points in ten minutes. It can happen. I mean, ultimately, I'd really like to be at around eight thousand points because, you know, I, uh, with only 30 minutes left to go when you get there, you really want to be uh, hitting the home stretch at that point. But uh, yeah, I'd say we're a little bit behind right now in terms of points where we want to be, but we're not so far behind that this is still isn't winnable. This is definitely still winnable. You know, we're, we're in the game still. We're just a little bit behind. We need to turn the heat up a little bit more, bring more divisions, more brigades, more cavalry across the river, and start pushing, uh, really making a push on the Prussians back behind Vavre. I'm just trying to fine-tune this line so I don't have to watch it anymore. So I really want to start to start pushing. So I'm going to start actually advancing some of these squares so that we can start pushing the Prussian cavalry back. They have no infantry over here. There's nothing to stop me from advancing my squares and actually beginning to shoot at the Prussian cavalry, forcing them back. This line unit is doing great. They've got 147 points. They've inflicted 182 losses and have only taken 36. So they're doing good right now. They're taking advantage of the fact that the Prussians are stuck in square. We're bringing fresh cavalry up, and uh, we'll start to start to push eastwards against this cavalry that's already been used now. Vincent's cavalry is resting; they're used up right now. They've done a lot of work, but uh, Daniel's cavalry is on its way up. We've got Lagarde's brigade coming up, and uh, Hulot's whole division is back here. And I think we're just going to grab his entire division and. Uh, you know, there's enough room to bring them up now. There we go. 5,000 men. And let's just bring them up in rear here across the creek. And we're just going to bring the whole division up, set them up with uh, line artillery front, and then we'll just grab their brigades when they get in position and use them as we need them. Just bringing as many troops across as we can now so we can really start forcing the issue. Because it's, it's getting late. We got about 47 minutes, or 30, 37 minutes left. Uh, I think I'm just sizing up the situation here. All right, so Morin's cavalry is approaching Lamale here. And uh, he's got his infantry right behind it. So some of these guns are hooking up here. Ooh, if one of these units can get across the river, we can probably charge those guns. These guys are all under AI control right now. Pretty much letting them, uh, letting them handle the situation. So we have another brigade of cavalry also approaching. There's not too much here. There's an artillery battery, a couple of infantry units, and a tiny little cavalry squadron. So 
So let's uh, we'll let that attack develop. The AI is controlling it, and when more serious stuff starts happening, then I'll get involved. Where are these 48 men going? All right, so Lagarde's brigade is coming across. And they're basically a skirmish unit. Might as well just deploy them over here. These guys are doing amazing. We've got 170 points. They're shooting these squares up. And as I said, I'm going to start advancing these squares to actually start pushing the cavalry back. Because the cavalry can't do anything against squares. So if we just keep hopscotching forward a little bit, uh, we can start pushing them back. I'm going to actually bring one battalion forward of the objective to start, uh, to start uh, shooting it. And here comes Hulot's whole division. And once we get them across, we'll really be able to start pushing. We've still got one more cavalry brigade over here, too, I believe. Uh, yep, we have Bonamain's cavalry. So let's, uh, let's bring them forward, too. With two, uh, we got another. Here's a fresh cavalry brigade, and then we're bringing another one forward. So we should be able to achieve cavalry superiority. I don't think. I think this is all the Prussians have left, and we've got most of their units bottled up back here behind Favre. And it's time to start trying to push against it. What are we at? So we're at 7,300 points. A little bit behind. This is a little bit behind. We need to attack La Male. We need to capture that objective. Uh, you know, if we can run down a battery, that'll get us some points. Look at this, look at these guys. If, if they're across the river, if we can get this battery, that'll get us some points. That'll be a lot of points. So let's grab control of them and, uh, and head for this battery. If we can wipe them out, it's going to make it a lot easier to get across the river without taking a lot of casualties. And we'll get a lot of points for taking it, so let's go. Points time. All righty. 45 points. 75 points. The Prussian battalion is forming square. So, all right. This is almost 200 points now. 220 points. No, no, no. Don't charge the square dummies. All right, so that should put us at about 7,500 points. A uh, little bit behind, but not too bad. If we can assault La Mali, drive these Prussian units so off, and get the objective, that can make up. That can make up for it. And I'm going to make one more trip to the fridge, guys. I will be right back. I'm back. So we have Pichot's division. Uh, 
he of course has two brigades. I think uh, Rome and Schaefer, they're two decent sized brigades. Uh, and some artillery. So we've got a lot of troops coming towards La Male, And if we can capture it and inflict some losses on the Prussians, uh, that should do something to uh, help us gain some more points. Meanwhile, at Vavra here, the Prussians look like they're pulling back. Their cavalry is pulling back. We can keep advancing these squares. We can keep pushing their their cavalry back while we bring our fresh cavalry up, and then we can start to if we can separate the cav their cavalry from their infantry, and basically wedge our squares in between, uh, we can start to use our cavalry that's been resting as well as the new cavalry that's coming up, and we can really start uh, uh, putting a hurt on those units behind Wavra. These guys are, no, that's not worth anything. They're just going to run away. And they're too far away to even bother with. So, uh, yeah, Hulot's entire division is making his way across... And uh, we're, we're really building up a lot of troop strength uh, to make our final push. And uh, Pachot's division is approaching Lamale. That's a 5,000 man division, so definitely not peanuts. There's not much here. All right, so Danielette's cavalry is up. Got a nice fresh cavalry division, 700 uh, troopers. Let's scope out the situation and see how best to use them. The first thing I think is let's see if we can sweep the Prussian cavalry, what's left of it, from the field here. So, uh, 77, 7,800 points. We're kind of right there. I like to be at 8,000 at 1730. We're a little bit behind, but we're only talking a few hundred points. So it's, 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 we're still kind of on point. We're a little bit behind where I'd like to be. I'd like to be at 8,000 points right about now, but it's still winnable. Just keep, we're, you know, we're bringing Hugh Lott's division up. That's going to give us an enormous advantage in, in, in the number of men and, and, we should be able to push it. So, uh, Rome's brigade is in the lead here. Nearly 3,000 men. That should be more than enough to take care of what's in the town here. And uh, we'll make sure they use the road to get across the bridge. Schaefer's brigade coming up. I don't know where the hell they're headed. I don't really care. I know Rome's Brigade is enough to do it. And there's Test Division in the rear. I don't know where they're going. Maybe they, maybe they know a Ford. So, uh, here comes our fresh cavalry brigade, and, uh, here we go. We're heading on, a head-on collision with two 
Prussian cavalry squadrons. And they are quickly giving way. Well, one of them is anyway. The other one is in a nasty fight. And two more Prussian cavalry squadrons. So, uh, this could be a real fight here. Now, uh, we're definitely losing more men than, uh... We're definitely getting the worst of it here, but the Prussian cavalry appears to be backing off, which is kind of more what I had wanted to happen, so... Eh. We definitely lost more men than I would have liked. Oh, so Vincent must have gotten killed. So we don't have a leader for him now. He's too far away. So we'll yeah, we'll just have to use squadron on squadron with uh, with Vincent's brigade. So uh, well. We actually came back there. You know, we're only down 27 men now compared to, uh, so, uh, and we have driven a lot of the Prussian cavalry off the field. However, I didn't realize this. They still have a lot more. Now, we don't want to get too close to that, especially with these guys. Fall back, buddies. I didn't realize they still had all this cavalry up here. We have broken this wide open though. A lot of this is a lot of this has been shot up and fallen back. And that Prussian cavalry is on the move. Let's we'll see if we can reform uh Dianulet's brigade and let them rest a little bit before they have to engage this cavalry. Oh, and I forgot we still have uh who's it? Bonneman's cavalry coming up? No, well, we still got more cavalry coming up. So we'll pull Dianulet back. He did do a good job at running some of that Prussian cavalry off. I didn't realize there was so much more back there. We'll pull them back and let them rest, and uh, Bonneman's cavalry is coming up, along with Hulot's entire division. So we're at 8,000 points with 20 minutes to go. So a lot of this is now going to hang on capturing Lamale. All right, so here comes uh, the lead elements of Rome's brigade. And let's see if we can get them across the bridge and just knock this Prussian unit out of the way. It's, uh, it's a decent unit. Hit them, boys. Hit them. And okay, they're running. They're pulling back. Now the rest of the brigade is trying to charge across the river here. I don't know if they can do that. Let's see what happens. Dude, these guys are liable to reach them before these guys are. Again, and only can, even though you see troops across, only if the flag gets across are they actually across. And none of these flags are across yet. So let's see if it's possible here. 
These, I said, these guys are gonna hit him first. And they're hitting a square. They're just gonna break and run. All right, these flags have all gotten across. These guys are definitely across. And now these guys are gonna try and charge these guys. I don't I don't know if they're gonna win that. They've already charged two units. And they've lost 120 men. No, they are well, no, they're not really getting the best of it. They're in trouble. Well, the Prussians did retreat. It's a good thing they did, because that unit was in danger of losing that melee. That's okay. We got Tess Hole Division coming down. We've still got uh, Schaefer's Brigade. And uh, let's see if we can reform Rome's Brigade and actually occupy the objective. And it looks like this cavalry unit, who is under AI control, is going to take a crack at these guys. These guys have earned a lot of points. 212. This must be the unit to capture the artillery. So, uh, yeah, they're running this Prussian unit off. And gaining some points while they're at it. And we now have control of the Lamale objective. Okay, that helps. Definitely helps. But back here at Vavra. We have pulled back the Amulet's Brigade. We're still in pretty good shape. I mean, they're only down by 20 points. Just want to pull them back and let them rest, because I know Bonneman's Cavalry is coming up, and they're going to be completely fresh. Where are we at? 8,300 points. Still doable. Got to keep pushing, though. Never stop pushing. Yeah, almost 8,400 points. Now we're at 8,400. Well, let's see what we can do over here. All right, so we have a lot more infantry up now. Where is your battery commander? There he is. This is a horse battery. <clears throat> Let's see if we can find a good place to good place to put them. Kind of right in here would be a good spot. Shoot at these Prussians as they come down. And they're protected by the from the cavalry by these squares. What great work this line is doing. They've inflicted 500 casualties. However, I think they're also getting low on ammo. And I don't have any supply wagons up here. So let's see if we can let's see if we can start running some of this off. None of these guys are in square. Our squadrons of Vincent's Brigade are pretty well rested now. We can, maybe we can start hitting some of this and running it off. All right, they they tried to form square, didn't they? Failed their morale check and routed. 
these guys have succeeded in forming squares. So let's head over here. Or are we just going to pull back and keep these guys in square? Check out Lamale. Our cavalry is moving in. So we got about three minutes before we get our first hundred points. The rest of our forces are still filing in. A lot of these troops are tired, charging across that river. Uh, here comes Penn's Brigade of Test Division. Uh, Schaefer's Brigade. I don't know what the hell he's doing out there. No time. There's no, no time to worry about him, though. Let's just concentrate on the forces that we have moving into Vavre, uh, to Lamale here. Side saddle these guys over so they can shoot this Prussian unit in the flank. And back at Vavra here. So the, all of Hulot's division is up now. Now let's just see what we got to do here. We got 15 minutes to make one last push here to try and break 10,000 points. And these guys are out of ammo. That's kind of what I was worried about. So let's just get them out of there. They've done good work. We'll bring up another line unit to take their place. These guys right here will do fine. They got 39 rounds. We'll bring them up to start pestering the square here. These guys are still in good shape. Let's see if we can make see if we can make a run on some of this and drive it off. That'll that'll get us some points. rid of those skirmishers just by threatening them and I want to see if we can hit some of these small units here and run them off. Some of these units are forming square but some of them aren't. Let's see if we can get some points. Alright, these guys are breaking. Their morale is not so hot, though. They're down to willing, so I don't, I don't want them to rout. I'm just going to get them out of there. So we're at 9,000 points. With 12 minutes to go, we need 1,000 points. So that's not as far as you think, because we now have three objectives. So every five minutes, we're going to get 300 points. 
So we got 12 minutes left. So in 10 minutes, that's 600 points. So we don't need to get 1,000 points. We need to get 400 points because uh, 600 of them are going to come from the objectives because we still have enough time to get two rotations of the objectives. So we don't need that much. Now, the one thing I don't want to do is go and get this cavalry involved, so I don't want my cavalry to get overly aggressive. I want to set this line up here and shoot at the square. That's what I really want to do. And uh, here is Ricard's brigade. We'll set them up in line and shoot at this square. But I really want to pull the cavalry back uh, a little bit. I, I don't want them to antagonize that little... Prussian Cavalry Regiment. Just because I don't feel like dealing with having to form square over here. I don't want to spend any more time over here than I have to because it's the real action at Wavre. You know, I have the objective. I just want to, uh, I just want to be able to shoot at these two squares. All right, so we have a Prussian unit approaching our artillery battery here. That could get us some points. And they're forming square because the cavalry is here, which will make the artillery even more effective. I'm going to advance Corson's brigade, set them up in line, and see if we can shoot these guys up. Well, the Prussians have really pulled back, but it looks like they're starting to come forward again. Let's grab our fresh brigade here, uh, Baum's brigade of Hugh Lott's division, and uh, advance them. And I think we're just going to set them up in... Uh, column by division here and uh, or maybe line we got another fresh cavalry squadron over here Vincent's brigade they're all rested up let's see if we can disrupt this advance the square pulled back I knew that would happen that artillery probably pounded them quickly and there's one one little Prussian battalion over here that we're gonna advance Corson's brigade in full battle line to just shoot at. <laughs> we got eight minutes. Let's see if we can get a charge on these guys. They're trying to move in in, co in column. I don't think they're going to be able to form square. Let's see if we can hit them. There we go. Oh, we're racking up points on these guys. 100 points. See? 100 points? That's a lot of points right now. 120 points. That's big money right now. We need that. Like I said, we only need 400 points. The other 600 are going to be from the objectives. Here comes Bonneman's brigade. This cavalry ran off one of our uh, one of our infantry. I didn't. They were hidden in the trees. I didn't see them there. We can hit some of these units. This, this unit here, this unit here. If we can hit these, get some more points. 
right, so that's 160 points this, that this uh, cavalry squadron has racked up. And they're still going. This unit doesn't look like it's going to form square either. 170 points. All right, so almost half of what we need has got been gotten just by this, this one squadron here. 230 points. Oh, we should be really close. All right, you can retreat now, fellas. You did good, but that's all squares now. And uh, here comes Baum's Brigade. We should get a lot of points once they set up in line. And yeah, I'm setting them up in battle line. And we are... We're running off the rest of this Prussian cavalry here. Let's see if we can send these guys into the action. Run off the rest of this Prussian cavalry. So this is our last big push here. And our cavalry has driven this, these Prussians off. Let's advance uh, course in and see if we can shoot the square up. We got to be real close right about now. Our cavalry is kicking the Prussians' butt right now. I got to believe we're over now. The Prussians are fleeing the field. And yes, 10,250 points. We have just clipped a major victory. We still have five minutes to go. And our points are continuing to go up here. So, uh, okay, we f firmly have control of, uh, of Le Male over here. Pen, get back here before you go and get yourself killed. Alrighty. We have a lot of artillery set up back there. Schaefer's Brigade, I don't know what the hell their thought was deploying over there. Here we go. Alright, you guys did good, but uh, time to retreat. It looks like the Prussian cavalry is trying a little bit of a counterattack. But you know what? We got more cavalry. So Daniel Danielette should be pretty well rested. We'll bring him back up and that should uh, that should take care of this Prussian counterattack here. Baum is now set up in line. He's pulverizing the square out here. Let's uh, let's form square with uh, some of these units just to uh, just to cover the retreat of this cavalry here, so that the Prussians can't get by it. If we form square as our cavalry passes through, the Prussian cavalry will have to stop. Still fighting over here. All right, these guys are withdrawing. And we will form square with this unit to protect the cavalry as it withdraws. 10,400 points. A minute 45 left in the scenario. 10,600 points, so we're still, uh, still racking it up.
Oh, the Prussians have gone and gotten some artillery on our flank. Uh, that squadron's a little pooped. Maybe these guys can take them. I don't know if they're going to be able to get over there in a minute. In a minute, though. Maybe. Go get them, boys. Charge them guns. Oh, you chickens. They're retreating. You chicken. Oh, well. That was our chance. We're not going to get another squadron over there in time. There's only 30 seconds left in this scenario. These guys are still in good shape. They, you know, they could do it, but there's, there's, you know, these guns have limbered now, so they're no threat anymore. And there's only 10 seconds left in the scenario. And there we go, guys. 10,663 points. Just clipped it, uh, but a major victory is a major victory nonetheless. Uh, so, uh, we inflicted 6,649 casualties, and we took 2,446 casualties. Uh, most of it was done, most of our work was done by Van Damme, a little bit by Gerard, some by Axelman, uh, really nothing by Pajol. Uh, so, uh, yeah, guys, so, uh, that is it for, uh, that is it for the Battle of Wavra. Uh, as I said, uh, this is one of the harder scenarios. E you know, even me, I've had a lot of practice at this scenario, and you know, it's really hard to get. It's really hard to get much more uh, the, uh, uh, above ten thousand than you know. The highest I've ever scored on uh, this scenario is probably like eleven, eleven five, somewhere in there. Um, you know, so it's it's not a scenario you're really ever going to. Uh, to just mop up and get, you know, 5,000 points ahead of what you need, you know. Um, you know, it's hard enough to get 10,000 points. Uh, but as long as you guys follow my point guide uh, and remember to, you know, uh, just, you know, keep track of your progress. Like I said, at about a half hour in, you want to be at at least 2,500 points. An hour in, you want to be at at least 5,000 points. Um, you know, an hour and a half in, you want to be somewhere between 75 and 8, you know, and, you know, from there on, you really want to turn up the heat. Um, you know, for a, a couple, you know, later on, you know, around an hour and a half in, we were a little bit below where I really wanted to be. But, uh, you know, as long as you push hard, you can uh, you can still get up above. Um, you could still come back. Look for you know, one of the things I do when I'm really looking for points is hunt artillery batteries. You know, you saw at the end there a couple of times I took a cavalry squadron and I was able to run. I was able to mop up some batteries and that really generates a lot of points. So, uh, you know, when you're looking to gain a quick few, couple of hundred points, um, especially with cavalry, cavalry is great for that. You know, look for vulnerable artillery batteries. The AI does not do a good job at protecting its artillery. Um, you know, so if you can find a vulnerable battery that's not protected and you can get a squadron to it, uh, and run it up and, and, and capture it, that's a lot of points. Um, and you know, that can, you know, if you're a couple of hundred points behind where you should be, that can quickly turn things around. Um, so guys, that is, that is it for the battle of Wavra. Um, and all that is left is Waterloo. Uh, the biggest battle in uh, in the whole game. Um, it's nine. Both scenarios, the French and the British, are are nine hours long. So it's going to be another <coughs> uh, multi-part series, uh, like Ligny was. However, it's even longer than Ligny, two hours longer. So instead of four-part series, we're looking at a five-part series for each one of these. Um, 
but uh, for all intents and purposes, other than Waterloo, uh, the two Waterloo scenarios, we are closing in on the end here. We are now done with Quatre Bras, Ligny, and Vavra. So all that stands before us is the Battle of Waterloo. Uh, those are long playthroughs. Um, I got to find the time to do them. Um, so uh, I've been busy lately. It's, it took me, you know, I actually recorded this playthrough for Wavra quite a few, almost a week ago, and I just haven't had the time to sit down and actually do the commentary for it. Um, ah, so it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a challenge for me to find the time to do the playthroughs uh, for the two Waterloo scenarios. So um, I'll try and get them done as quick as I can. But I got a lot of stuff on the uh, going on right now, so um, you know, just be patient. And uh, you know, when I'm able to find the time to actually sit down and 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 you know, I may not knock them out both at the same time. You know, I, I, I'll do the French one first, and then do the videos for it, and then I'll do the British, and then do the videos for it. Because knocking uh, knocking out 18 hours of gameplay is in you know, like I just got lucky when. Uh, when I did Ligny, I just happened to be a weekend where I had nothing else going on and I was able to sit down and, and gun out, you know, 14 hours of gameplay in one weekend. Uh, but that's the exception rather than the rule. Um, you know, I just got lucky. So uh, it's going to be tough for me to find the time to actually knock out the, uh, the Waterloo playthroughs. Um, but, you know, by hook or by crook, guys, I will get it done. I have not come this far to stop now. Um, we're nearly done. So I will get it done by hook or by crook, guys. Just uh, be patient, and uh, I'll be back with the uh, the full battle of Waterloo as soon as I can, as soon as I get those playthroughs recorded. Take it easy, guys.